Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Guys, a lot of different things are going on around the world right now, and we are doing some research on different issues, especially in light of the new sanctions that the uh, Barack Obama administration has placed on Russia. They have extended uh, the sanctions that they've been doing for, uh, for six more months, uh, and now they've added a whole list of new sanctions, including one that affects one of the companies that has been building uh, the bridge for Russia from the mainland to Crimea. And I am very concerned that this may be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, Russia, although they have weathered out these sanctions thus far somewhat uh, pretty good and, uh, based on the circumstances, I am afraid that the, the, the United States is really overstepping this. Uh, one, we realize, I mean, it's a debatable issue when it comes to Russia and Ukraine, but I personally do not see anywhere that Russia ever invaded Ukraine. And I want to make this real one thing real clear, and I'll be short about this, but you have to go back. When you look at President Yukonovich, he was the president of Ukraine. He was a democratically elected president. Ukraine was not under the Soviet Union any longer. But you have to understand what happened. For some reason, NATO, the European Union, whatever the case may be, they wanted Ukraine to become a part of the EU and a part of that economic structure. And President Yukonovich was wanting to do that as well, but he also wanted to maintain his his uh, financial ties and political ties with Russia as well. And it was when he decided to turn and do that that caused the West to take another step. And there's too much evidence out there, guys. And we're not here for propaganda. I'm not here I'm not here because I love my country, the United States, with all my heart. I do not like the Obama, Obama administration and the policies that they have. Uh, but as far as our country, I love our country. I'm not pro-Russian, but I am pro-truth. And I'm not going to sit here and just tickle your ears and make you feel good about something that I know is a complete lie. So when we look at this, I just want you to look at some of the facts briefly. President Yukonovich, he was the active president. He was elected. They say that Russia invaded Ukraine. Well, if he's the acting president and there is a coup going on in his country and he asks President Putin to save his life and rescue him on the beach there before the coup people murder this man. He's invited the Russian military into his country just to be rescued. And he now lives in Russia, but in, technical, in technicality, guys, he's still the president of Ukraine. He has every bit of the right to still be the president of this country. And then Obama has given himself away in one of the interviews he did in the United States where he says that we installed the government of Ukraine after the coup. Sure they did. George Soros was involved in that as well. What's that all about? We're going to go deeper into this, but we, we definitely see this is nothing but an anti-Russian propaganda, anti-Russian campaign. This is why they don't like uh, Donald Trump either as being the president of the United States because he'll bring peace. Isn't that, what, isn't that what we really want in this world, peace? Then what is it then about the Obama administration that they're so dead set against Vladimir Putin and this issue over Crimea? Crimea, guys, was a part of Russia all the way back in the 1700s. It's a documented fact. Just because, what, in 1954 or 56, they handed over the administrative uh, 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 part of Crimea to Ukraine because Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union at that time? Do you think that Russia's navy being, being docked there in Crimea, even all the way up until modern times, even into 2013, 2014, 2015, all these years, Russia's always had their military there. That would be like, as one politician said, that would be like the United States giving Pearl Harbor over to the Japanese. It is insane, guys to say that Crimea is not a part of Russia. And they, they try to make you like, whoa, Russia annexed it. No, the people voted for it. Do you know that in 1991, the, the people of Crimea voted for their independence, but Ukraine just ignored them? But Russia, they didn't, they didn't get involved in it. You know why Russia got involved in it this time? 
Two reasons. One, for Putin, it's strategic interest. His navy is there. And secondly, Crimea has been a part of Russia since the 1700s. All right. Secondly, it is predominantly a Russian people because it has been part of Russia since the 1700s. And because of that, he had to do something or either they're going to slaughter all the people. Listen, go back and watch the documentary, The Way, Crimea, The Way Home. You should hear those intercepted phone calls that Russian intelligence got and what they were planning on doing to the Russian-speaking people of Ukraine as well as Crimea. They wanted to annihilate them all. A genocide in modern times. That's what they wanted to do to them. This is why for us, we are not, we are not, I, I am dead set against global bias, especially global media bias. And for us, we have no reason to be biased. I definitely don't get paid by Russia to say what I'm saying. I'm telling you what I say because I look at the facts and I see it and I'm trying to tell you what is the truth of this matter. Something that everybody ought to see. Watch RT News. When RT News is sitting there in the White House, inside the room there, when they have these, these guys come out and they're having to answer the questions, and, and, and the, US, the U.S. under the Obama administration, they dodge every question. And not just RT. There'll be other reporters sitting in the room and call their hand on it. They don't care. They'll lie anyway just to make it look good. We're not about that, guys. I am not here to lie for you. But I do. I want to read something to you real quick. Um, like I said, they've extended the sanctions now. And now they've added it to where Russia, they're going to cut the bridge from being built from mainland uh, Russia over to Crimea. And I'm afraid, guys, this may be the straw that breaks the camel's back with Russia. I'm concerned about this. We already know Hillary is declaring war on Russia because of all these leaks of her emails and phone records and everything else. She is extremely angry. And Putin has said if she ever gets in the Oval Office, he knows this country is going to war. You know, so we have a choice between war and peace on just on who we elect. And, you know, and I'm not saying that Donald Trump is some knight in shining armor either, guys, but I'm just telling you, you know, at least he uses reason to say we can make peace with Russia. What do we need war for? Is it really that good, Mr. Obama, for, for, for the economy of the United States, for you to go, go, go against a, such a powerhouse of a nation? I mean, think about this, guys. Anyway, let me share with you something that uh, President Putin said in 2009. This was a statement he made. He said, any fourth grade history student knows socialism has failed every country and at every time in history said Putin, President Obama and his fellow Democrats are either idiots or deliberately trying to destroy their economy. You know, I wanted to bring this out to you because when I was doing my research today on news, I ran across this old statement of Vladimir Putin. And when I look at this in 2009, and here we are in 2016, seven years later, is it not evident? And some people might argue back then that Obama was not really for socialism, but look at Bernie Sanders and his socialistic views and wanting to do what he's doing. Look at, look at uh, Pope Francis, the socialism that he's looking at. You know, the only way socialism would ever work is if, you know, Yeshua himself, Jesus himself were to bring socialism, he would govern it the right way, and then yes, it would work. The socialism through governments of today will never work. It just can't work. And socialism will lead to fascism. And he says that in there. You know, it's what he says. Look, look at your history. Every country that ever had socialism failed. And this is not only what Bernie Sanders was looking for. This is what Hillary Clinton's all about. It's what Obama's all about. And he says, what are they doing it for? He says, are they idiot? They're either idiots or deliberately trying to destroy their economy. That's the clincher right there destroying their economy. Guys, just in closing, I want to share something with you here. As we look about the sanctions that this is going on Russia, I, I am concerned that this may become a national security threat for Russia, just as the United States has spoken many times before that economics can be a national security threat for the United States. Um, I see that the U.S., um, 
Even if they don't go to war, the threat of war is good business for them. That was quoted in a recent article. I, I don't know the article right off the top of my head, but I saw that just the other day, that one of the uh, leading um, figures in the um, U.S. government said that the threat of war is good for economy as well. Not just war, just the threat of war. Because why? They're selling a lot of tanks and bombs and jets and everything else. Uh, but that's just terrible that we have to do that. But, but I see all these threats. I see where John Kerry, recent, uh, back in 2011, when he was with Bashar al-Assad, trying to make a peaceful agreement with uh, Bashar al-Assad in Israel, then Prime Minister Netanyahu at that time, uh, but Prime Minister Netanyahu didn't trust the deal. Even though uh, Barack was for it, he was the defense minister and said he would have an open hand. But when Netanyahu threw the deal down, the next thing we know, Kerry must have got mad because then we see all kinds of insurgents on Syria and the U.S. backing insurgents to topple Bashar al-Assad. Isn't it interesting how Kerry one moment is your friend, the next moment you're his enemy? That's about what they do with Russia as well, isn't it? In one moment, Russia's their friend. The next moment, they're the enemy. It just depends on whether or not you do what the Obama administration wants you to do. And if you don't, you become the enemy of the state. <clears throat> and today, this morning, when we were going out of the hotel here in Slovakia, we ran across the Slovakian Paralympics team. And it was a real honor. We got to meet the coach of the team. And there were many of the players there. But when I met them and saw these uh, young people's enthusiasm on getting ready to participate in the Paralympics in Rio, I could not help but think about Russia once again and how they've been thrown under the bus in regards to the Paralympics. And that really lets you know it is an agenda. It is a boycott. It reminds me, you have to tell you the truth, guys. It reminds me of what the mark of the beast will be. You can't buy or sell saving you take the mark. And if I don't see that with what NATO is doing right now, they are forcing Russia's hand or anybody else that doesn't agree with them. You either do what we say or we take away all your privileges. You're not going to eat. You're not going to buy. You're not going to sell. We're not going to finance your you know, we'll, we'll do sanctions on you. I mean, that is exactly what I'm seeing. And when they take these people that are handicapped, and they did this to the Russian athletes, it was, it's a tragedy to me. We had, I had the opportunity, my wife filmed it for me, but I had an opportunity to, to speak with one of the Slovak um, uh, Olympic participants, one of, the, one of the athletes that will be participating in the Olympics there. Uh, nice young man, and we wish him well. Uh, I did ask him about Russia, and he, he was pretty neutral on that. And I understand it's a very tough situation for him, and I don't want to put him on the spot. But I want to share with you, because it was a special moment for me as well, and my wife, to be able to, to get to meet these guys, to see, as I told him, I said, you're a real hero. And, you know, to see that they go out there, these, these people with um, incredible, incredible gifts to go out and participate uh, competitively. I want to share that with you now. Take a look at this clip here. Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we're here in Slovakia, actually for another purpose, but at the hotel we're staying at, we happen to have the Slovakian Paralympics uh, team here at the hotel, and it is an honor. And I have Samuel here uh, that I just got to meet a moment ago. Uh, with the Olympics team. One, he's the youngest member, according to the uh, coach of the team here, he's the youngest member that will uh, be competing uh, in Rio at the Olympics there. And I just want to tell you, it's an honor to get to meet you guys. And it's it's a personal thing for me as well. You may not know this because you don't know me, but uh, my mother was a quadriplegic. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very moving moment for me to get to meet uh, some of the members of the Olympic team. And uh, what do you compete? What is what is your particular uh, uh, sport that you're competing in? Uh, I'm doing a sport called Bocha since uh, 2010. Uh, from 2013, I play internationally for the Slovak Republic, and uh, this is my first Paralympic Games. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, one thing that I would be curious about, because we have been noticing that Russia got totally banned from the Olympic Games. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, my opinion, you mean? Uh, yes. 
It's uh, very, very hard to say about it. Uh, we try to uh, think about uh, our our training, our preparation, and uh, don't talk about Russian. Uh, my uh, my my opinion is it's not very good, uh, but uh, what I can do with it. So. Right, right, right. No, yeah, I understand that. I mean, the only thing that I thought of is when I looked at this. You wouldn't. I, I see when they're dealing with the issues on the regular athletes because they're, they're dealing with the doping scandals, things like that. But in Paralympics, you never think of an idea of a doping scandal, and I just couldn't understand why they would do that to them. Still, at the same time, I think about the athletes in general, and I realize that athletes are athletes, you know, and especially in the Paralympics. Uh, you know, you guys are, are incredible in doing what you're doing. And to, to think of that, and then I uh, think about the Russian athletes too, what do these guys must they must be going through? Uh, being put out of the games over politics in the background, and I think that's the tragedy of, of that situation there. But um, anyway, I wish you well, Samuel. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, it's a blessing to meet you. Thank you. And, too. I, and, and I want to see you come back with the gold. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> it's my dream. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, good luck in the games. Thank and you. we'll be watching you then on, on television and we'll watch it there as well. Thank you. Shalom. Thank you, sir. That was a blessing, no doubt, to see these. Uh, you can see in the background there the other, the, the other participants from Slovakia. So we wish the Slovak team... Uh, well, in the Olympics there, and, and God bless the coach and all the people there that are working with uh, these incredible athletes as they go to the Rio Olympics there that will be starting uh, here. I think it was the 6th or the 7th that he said there uh, in the interview there. Uh, one other thing I want to bring up to you guys' attention as well, and that's the, the draft in Germany. Uh, uh, the, other, the other night we, we did pull the video. Now, I didn't pull the video because I don't believe that the information is is correct, but let me just kind of state a little bit about that, uh, the, the draft, the German draft, and the possibility of the two doctors being drafted. Uh, I did see your comments, and some of you guys were speaking about Superstation 98 is uh, not uh, an accurate news source, that they've been known to do a lot of uh, false news. And I, I did want to say this here. One, I, uh, I, I don't know if Superstation 98 was the actual original source for the doctors on the draft, perhaps so. But I did do some more research on that and I could not actually find that part. But what I do want to tell you though, and we'd already brought it up in the news already, German News, and I re-looked it up again, 23rd and 24th of August had already reported right after they had reported about stockpiling food for 10 days in case of a catastrophic event, worst case scenario so to speak, but the German government uh, on the 23rd and 24th of August, we saw the reports in German news. We brought it out here on Israeli News Live that they were, uh, it was before the, the government in, in Germany to bring back the conscript. The conscript is the military draft. Uh, besides that, we also have uh, shared with you the iodine situation over in uh, Austria. Austria, another German speaking country there. Uh, my wife's own cousin who had a prescription from the doctor to get a oral iodine for her husband goes to the pharmacy in her own little town there and the pharmacist said we don't have any more it's totally gone and of course she's concerned how could you not have iodine and she says what do I do my husband you know he has a bad wound and, and I need it for you know he needs an oral iodine I forget exactly what the issue was that he has that he needs it for but he has a need for oral iodine. At any rate though, the pharmacist confided in her and explained to her that there is a threat of war. That doesn't mean that war is actually coming, but it is a threat of war. And she said, therefore, the government is putting all the supplies of oral iodine for its soldiers first. And of course, the politicians, if I understood it right. That is also another indication, not to mention uh, the Czech government here, when they are talking about joining a one military between the, the uh, for the, what they call, what the governments have here been calling for a super state, 
for one military. The Czech government has agreed to be a part of that one military with the, with the German government and the French governments who are already involved, you know, planning to bring it together a one military. And the Czech government said because, you know, for the worst case scenario, now the worst case scenario in the Czech government was not saying to stockpile food. That's not what they're saying. The Czech government was talking about you know, if war were to come to this region, if they unite together with one military for whatever the worst case scenario would be, then they would feel like they would be better protected. The issue is, guys, we have all kinds of things that are happening here that we see that we know for, for a fact. There's a lot of tensions in this area. There's a lot of fear. Now, is that being you know, stirred up by the West? I, I don't know. I, I think it is. But then again, Russia is mounting up a huge amount of troops over on the borders. And, but they're, they're doing it because what, what can you expect out of them? They have NATO troops all over their borders. So something is getting serious, guys. And I do believe that there may be some truth to this uh, report that in fact, these doctors were drafted We'll just have to wait to see. As of yet, though, I've not been able to corroborate it through a, another independent report. So we pulled the video only for that reason there, because I've not been able to corroborate it through another report. So I did. I do have a respect if people, you know, really feel that this is not a legitimate news source. Uh, we pulled it based on that, but there's a lot of overwhelming evidence that it could be very well true. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom, guys, and have a great evening.